I really don't want to have to make this video, but I feel like I owe you guys the story, so, so here it goes. I know, Ginny, this is going to be a tough one to tell everybody about. So yesterday, I got a Facebook message from a friend of mine who lives here in town in Peachum. And it basically said he just drove by our house and he saw a dead cat on the side of the road and just wondered if it was one of ours. Now getting this message made my heart leap out of its chest. I immediately dropped my phone, ran outside, started looking up the street that way, just trying to see what was going on and to see if one of my beloved barn cats had been killed by a car. You know, we've had bad luck with the road in front of our house in the past. Lil Barn Cat, who was our second barn cat, was actually hit by a car right around this time about two years ago. She was on the verge of death, but some incredible veterinary work actually ended up saving her life, and she now works as an indoor house cat. But because of her injury, she couldn't ever return to barn cat duty. Which is how we ended up with Ginny Barn Cat here, as well as her mother, Molly Murder Mittens, or Molly Wobbles, as I like to call her in our quieter times. You see, we currently have three outdoor barn cats. We have the legendary Pablo Barn Cat, who was the first animal we ever had on our farm. Then we have Ginny, and Molly. I was terrified that one of the three cats had been hurt by this car accident or probably more likely killed. And so as I'm looking out on the street, I see one of the kids who lives in the house across the street right riding his bike right on the road. He asks me if everything's okay because clearly I look like I'm totally having a meltdown in the middle of our country road. And I tell him that I got a message from someone saying that there was a dead cat on the road. And he looked kind of sad and said yes and that apparently his cat had actually just been killed earlier that day. And so the cat that my friend saw turned out to be my neighbor's cat. And while I felt absolutely terrible for my neighbors, I will admit that there was a certain sense of relief that I felt because it meant that Pablo, Molly, and Ginny were all safe. And shortly after I had that conversation with the, the next door neighbor kid, I ran around checking on all the barn cats. and I was able to breathe a serious sigh of relief. And so I went about my day, and it wasn't until about seven o'clock at night. Ooh, would you look at those apples? When I came outside, I was gonna go take Abby for a walk and do a little training session with her, and I suddenly noticed that Molly barn cat was lying right here, and something looked weird about her. And when I say weird, like, just something looked totally off. Like, she was laying all balled up, which is something she wouldn't do in the middle of a hot summer afternoon. And she kind of had her face covered. And when I called to her, she didn't come. She just kind of picked her head up and looked at me. And when I looked at her, her right eye was just bloody and looked weird and off, and I was terrified. What had happened to her? You know, again, my adrenaline had already been up and elevated from the incident earlier that day with my neighbor's cat. And I was wondering, did she get hit too? Is there somebody out here attacking cats? Like, what the heck is going on? And so I tried to get closer to her to pick her up, and she shied away. Which, again, is not Molly Murder Mitten's behavior. I think you guys have seen enough of our videos. You'll know that she just loves to be with me and loves to rub up against me and is just the snuggliest barn cat you can imagine behind maybe only little Ginny barn cat. So immediately in my head, I kick into, like, emergency mode, and I run into the house, and I get the cat carrier. And my plan is I'm going to snatch her and I'm gonna rush her to the best possible emergency vet that we have in our area. It's the one that we took Lil Barn Cat to that's all the way out in Burlington. And I knew just right there that I needed to do everything I possibly could to save her life. With the cat carrier in tow, I set it down, I scooped up Molly, she fought me immediately and, and was like struggling and scratching at me. She did not want to be touched at all. And I should say, in the past, Molly Murder Mittens, although sweet and friendly, has proven very difficult to get into cat carriers. And so as I carefully try to slip her into the cat carrier, she slips through my fingers and escapes and runs into the barn. I immediately rush in in pursuit, trying to catch her, but very, very quickly, she runs out of my grasp and she's like gone. I spent about two and a half hours wandering through that barn, usually using a flashlight because it was starting to get dark at a certain point, trying to find her, trying to catch her so that I could then take her to the vet. Al although the only visible injury she had was on her eye, I was worried that she like might have suffered some sort of other trauma and could have had a concussion or could have had other internal injuries. You know, when Lil Barncat had her accident, she had internal bleeding, she had a ruptured bladder, she had a broken pelvis. The vet had said that the thing that was probably most likely to kill her was the ruptured bladder. So I feel like you never know with an injured cat what could be really wrong until you get a good vet opinion on what's wrong. But after a certain point, 
point, there's only so much I can do because I mean, we have a giant three-story barn that Molly lives in and that's her home. And so she knows every nook and cranny she can see in the dark. And if she didn't want to be caught, there was no way I was catching her. And so that's when I put a plan into action. I got my trusty generic have a heart trap and I stuck a can of cat food in the back. I locked up Pablo Barn Cat and Ginny Barn Cat in the basement for the night. I also set up a whole bunch of video cameras all throughout the barn so if she came through I'd be able to see her and at the very least see what sort of condition she was in because it was at that point when I was getting ready to go in for the evening I was very concerned because I was pretty sure that that was going to be the last time I ever saw Molly murder mittens and she was going to die from some sort of internal injuries and I was probably never going to even find the body. It is absolutely no exaggeration that I cried myself to sleep that night. I woke up a couple times in the middle of the night and ran out to the barn just to do a quick check around and call for her, but no luck. She hadn't even touched her food. But when I came out to the barn around five o'clock this morning, I looked at the have a heart trap and the door had been sprung shut and inside the trap was a cat. I felt such an incredible sense of relief until I got a couple steps closer and I realized that the cat that was in the trap wasn't Molly Murder Mittens. It was another cat, another cat I knew. Followers of our channel might be familiar with the feral cat that I trapped a few months back. He had been coming around and fighting with my cats, but I set my have a heart trap and I caught him. And I was even about to rehome him to a friend of mine. But because this cat was so crazy and so feral, he actually broke out of the room that I was keeping him in. And for a while, I actually hadn't seen that cat, but recently I caught a glimpse of him here and there, and I had been trying to catch him occasionally on some nights. That feral cat was actually inside the have a heart trap. I would have loved to have caught him sooner, but at that moment, it was really disappointing to have him in a have a heart trap. I picked up the trap and I set it aside on the porch. I knew I was gonna have to deal with him later this morning, but I didn't wanna have to deal with it now. I actually dedicated my energy towards immediately looking for Molly. I set out fresh food, I started calling for her, and no luck. So, so eventually I ended up going out to the pasture and doing all my animal chores. But as I finished up with the chores and came back to go inside and have breakfast, standing right over there by the porch was Molly Murder Mittens. And she looked absolutely horrible. Her eye was bloody and it looked like a blackened cavity at that point. She looked weak and fragile, but she also looked terrified. And as I approached her, I was worried that she was gonna run off again. I even opened the door to the house to maybe let her try to sneak her way back into the house because oftentimes she likes to sneak in there and try to eat the cat food. But I just kept walking up to her slowly, talking very calmly to her, trying to coax her with me. And eventually I got my arms around her. I brought her inside and inside the mudroom, I ended up stashing her in the cat carrier. I was hoping for the best, but absolutely bracing myself for the worst. By this point, it was like 8.30 in the morning or so. And so I immediately took her to my local vet. I've got Molly Wobbles here riding shotgun with me in the cat carrier finally. And in the bed of the pickup truck, I've got the stray cat. He's out in the there. I've got him secured inside a cage. I tried to keep both of them in the cab of the pickup truck, but like all hell was breaking loose. And so I figured this was the safest way to transport both cats at the same time for the seven miles it takes to get to my vet. flies. <laughs> it's actually right next to my vet. Hang tight, Molly Wobbles. We're gonna get you checked out. You doing okay back there, buddy? Hang tight. It's okay, sweetie. You're gonna be okay. Come on. It's okay. It's okay. All right, sweetie. You're gonna be in good hands. You're gonna be in good hands. Thank you very much. We'll be in touch. All right. So on my way over to the vet, I actually got a call from my friend Nicole. Nicole runs this bird farm out in like the Montpelier area called Sugar Feather Farm. 
she does like hatching of all sorts of ducks and chickens and rare breeds and turkeys. She's got hundreds of birds, it's crazy over there. So, but anyway, she's had a rodent problem and so she's actually in need of a barn cat. And so now we're gonna take our friend here and bring her over. Her farm was actually the place I was gonna take him last time before he escaped. And so now it looks like we're gonna finally get him there. How's it going? Good to see you. Come on, buddy. It's okay, pal. It's okay. Come on, buddy. Meet your new owner. Hey, bud. It's like, whoa, there's way more birds than the last place here. Hey, boys. What do you think? Huh? Something new. While I think it's gonna be somewhat of a culture shock for him, I think the feral cat is gonna settle in really well at Nicole's. There's a lot of opportunity for hunting for him. It's gonna take a couple of weeks to train the cat to Nicole's farm, and in order to do that, he's gotta be kept in a shed. But once he gets through that training period, he'll be able to be set free and range around the farm looking for rodents. <laughs> All right, let's go, Molly. Have a good day. It's okay, Molly, it's okay. Hey, sweetie, it's okay, it's okay. Well, I just got some really good news from the vet. Oh, I know, Molly, you hate the cat carrier, but right now it's for the best. Hi. Don't worry, Molly, we'll get you home in a minute. So yes, good news from the vet. The vet's theory is it definitely was a fight with some sort of animal, probably a cat, probably the feral cat that we just rehomed over to Nicole's place. Apparently there's actually no problem with her eye itself, but she had cuts above her eye and below her eye, almost indicating like a, a bite mark right over the face. So definitely not a good thing, but also definitely not a life-threatening thing. I will tell you though, last night I was so worried. I, I was terrified I would never see her again, but it looks like it's gonna end well. I'm gonna keep Molly in the house for a couple of days just to give her a chance to heal up and, and make sure everything's 100% before I put her back outside. The vet even said I could put her back out immediately, but I don't know. I'm worried about her and I love that little cat. And, and so I wanna just give her just a little more time to heal and get back to normal. And then once she gets back to normal, she'll be back out and doing her usual Molly murder mix type of thing. You know, I've never been a cat person and I still don't think I'm a cat person, but I'm just glad that Molly murder mittens is gonna be okay. Okay, Molly. Come on out, sweetie. Oh, you're hungry? I was gonna put it in your dish, but you're so hungry. So down. Uh... 